I am going to hit the record button right now. So this it conference make, will now be recorded. Just so we have uh, this recorded for anybody who couldn't uh, be here or if anybody has to disconnect for any reason, you can still access this material. This is here for you. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, the guys who are in the room right now, and then I'm going to hand it over to them and they'll get started. If you've got technical trouble as we move through, if you can't unmute yourself and you need to ask a question, there is a chat feature, and I'm keeping an eye on that as we go. So you can go ahead and ask your question in there, and I'll bring it up uh, when we have time. Uh, but now, joining me in the conference room, we've got Brian Bunselmeyer, the TAPS Executive Director, Steve Huhulin, TAPS uh, Athletic Director, Robert Huckabee, TAPS uh, Director of Compliance and an associate director and Steve Prudhomme, TAPS associate director. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Brian and we're going to get started. Thank you, John. Thank you to everybody for joining us here today. It's a busy time of year as we move into the new year. There's a lot of uh, things that are going to come up very quickly. We just wanted to give you an opportunity to hear some of our thoughts and then to ask questions to help make your life a little easier. I do appreciate you taking the time out of the day and appreciate you being a member of TAPS. Mr. Hulan, why don't you jump in with the calendar? Sure. Let's look at what's been happening in TAPS, especially earlier this summer. You may or may not have joined us, but if you haven't, you can kind of look ahead to next year and think about possibly joining us. In, in early June, we held a sand volleyball tournament that was held at the Game On Sports Complex in Fort Worth. We had 124 teams. Unfortunately, the weather was kind to us. It was just a great tournament. Later on in June, we had a six-on-six -six and seven-on-seven -seven tournament for you football coaches. These were held at the hot soccer fields in Waco. We had 36 teams. So if you think about it for next year, these were outstanding opportunities for your kids to compete. Uh, think about coming next year or if you were with us and you, knew, you know how, how good that was for us. Later this month, uh, this week, August 10 through 12, is our Spike Down Tournament in Fort Worth. About one-fourth of our volleyball teams will be there. So this is a great tournament to be a part of. If you're going to be there, uh, boy, sure, come on by and, and, and uh, introduce yourselves. But uh, we're looking forward to that. And then later this August, August 28 to 29, we have our Fall Soccer Tournament. And that's going to be in Round Rock, Texas. Uh, it's at the Round Rock Multipurpose Complex. I can pass it on over to Steve Prudhomme, who's going to talk about some September deadlines. Yeah, September 1 is the first administrative deadline that you really need to be looking at. And as an old athletic director, I used to put that right next to my phone, pin it to the wall. September 1st, you need to get your TAPS contract in. Your participation form is due as well. Let you know all the activities that you plan on participating in this year and also getting your fees and dues into the TAPS office. So mark that on your calendar, put it on your wall, uh, but be ready to do that. And also, if you're confused, if you need some help putting it together, or how do I answer it, how do I fill it out, you, you can reach out to the TAPS office and we're here to help. We have done quite a few TAPS contracts over the years and we're here to help you this year. Robert? All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, just a few days after that, on September 5th, this is a very important date you need to know as an athletic director. This is our fall transfer deadline for all of our fall sports. It's also our senior transfer deadline. So these are two very important dates for any of your students that want to participate in fall sports. They need to be withdrawn from their previous school. They need to be enrolled in class, in a seat, and attending your school uh, by that deadline. So if you have, as you begin school in the next couple of weeks, uh, you have transfer students that come in uh, after that time. Uh, if they're trying to get admitted into your school and you're getting real close to that September 5th deadline, reach out to our office for assistance. But more importantly, just know, make sure your registrar and admissions people know uh, that's a hard deadline, uh, and make sure that uh, those are on your radar. You get that information to us. They don't have to be approved as a transfer by that deadline, but they need to be at your school. For seniors, this one's very, very important. Some of our schools don't accept senior transfers. We understand that, but if you do, they need to be there by that September 5th deadline for any activities for the entire year. So. Uh, if that comes uh, up against uh, the time frame and you need help, reach out to our office. We can help you walk through that information. Also on that date, our enrollment snapshot. This is very, very important because we have our new alignment uh, coming up this fall. We're going to be accumulating information for our next uh, two-year alignment, uh, 2024 through 26. 
So this first part of September is very, very important. That September 5th is a very important date. Brian? Just going to ask you a couple questions here, Robert. The, the September 5th deadline is a Tuesday. We all are aware that Monday, September 4th, is a holiday. So what we're really saying is you got to have the student the, uh, withdrawn from the old uh, school and enrolled in your school on that date, correct? That is correct. And this comes up every year. It is the Tuesday after that Labor Day holiday. If the week before parents or students are coming to your school thinking they want to make a change in transfer, um, that paperwork needs to move pretty quickly and get them enrolled in your school if you want them to be considered for fall activities for underclassmen and then for those senior transfers for activities for the entire year. And Steve, before we jump back over there to you, the participation forms and the contract were all mailed out on August 1st. So if you haven't seen those, please feel free to reach out to us here at the TAPS office. But those were mailed out to the athletic director's email that we had on file back on August 1st. All right, Steve, carry on with September. Well, going back to September 1st, you had your participation form that is due. That is for the 23-24 school year. On September 15th, you have a participation intent form that is due for the 24 through 26 school year. One of the athletic directors I was talking about said, talking to said we could call that the anticipation form. So that is the anticipation form for 24-26. It is not going to, you're not going to be held to it, but it gives us a great idea of what we're doing as we move forward with realignment. So give us your best uh, guess, prediction of what your school is going to be doing for those two years uh, coming up. We'll also have the TAPS Golf App Training Webinar, I Want a Maker. If you haven't heard of this, it probably sounds pretty strange. But during the, the uh, state tournaments, we're going to be using our I Want a Maker app, and we're going to try it in Match Play Golf. We're talking about doing it as well, where the students will keep another uh, competitor score on their phone through the app, and, at the, and we can have the scores being updated as we go. It's in real time. And then when they walk off the course, the scores are, are tabulated and everybody can see what's going on. So we had a great uh, experience with it last year, and we didn't really know what we were doing. So we're expecting an incredible time now that we're starting to figure out this app and what's happening. But, again, once we were able to get the phones out of their pockets and, and the, the sun kept shining, we were okay with that. So prepare for that, and if you're involved in golf, definitely get on this training webinar. Now moving on to October, match play golf. Uh, last year we were anticipating just a small number of teams and, and we were all ready for our course in Waco at Cottonwood Creek. And then all of a sudden teams started showing up, signing up, and we kind of got overwhelmed and we flowed over into another golf course. And so we're looking to confirm that second golf course as well, just like last year. But again, match play golf, it's a great way to keep your kids involved in golf in the fall, especially if they're not doing anything else and uh, getting ready for the spring. But it's just a lot of fun in and of itself. The coaches, um, the players, and the TAP staff just really enjoy match play golf. The same said for team tennis, which will be October 4th through 6th. This will be at the Waco Regional Tennis Center. And, again, it requires that you have boys and girls tennis players to fill out a team and so you need to look up all the rules involved in team tennis but if you can be involved in this you're going to have a great opportunity to really get your kids enthused in the fall as they're training it, it brings a lot of camaraderie so again team tennis consider it if you have a tennis team october 16th you know that's the day we're going to be starting our, our soccer and our basketball practices okay make sure up until that point you should be in off season and following the off-season rules outlined in Section 136 on October 16th, then you start full practices. TAPS does not have a limit on the number of practices or the length of that throughout the week except for staying off of Sundays. But, again, we leave that to local control. But, again, watch that date. That includes having tryouts. So do not have a tryout the Saturday before you start practice because, again, you're still in off-season rules up until that date. October 23rd, we're going to have our drumline fall band uh, championships in Waco. Fantastic, fantastic competition. That's a lot of fun. Uh, you bring your earplugs. It makes it a little bit easier at times as they're warming up and getting ready to go, uh, with, especially with the drummers. But, again, it's a great competition that we have, and we have it at the Waco ISD Stadium. The 26th and 27th field hockey championships, we have a handful of teams that play field hockey. And so there's a competition that they're having, and TAPS is going to go support that. 
market that opportunity and also we're going to put it on taps tv and if you're involved in that it's it's, it's a it's a fun event if you're not involved it's an opportunity to go up on taps tv and see what field hockey looks like um, it is an interesting sport and it's a little bit different than most things that you you experience october 31st halloween we start fall soccer area playoffs but before that, we're going to have the cross-country state championships in Waco. If you have just one runner, it's all comers meet. It's one of the most spectacular things you're going to see. 14, 1,500 runners, a couple thousand uh, fans coming to Cottonwood Creek. And again, it is, it is magical, okay? It is epic. So come to the cross-country state championships if you can. Bring you a team if possible. Need to at least have, uh, what is it, four runners that we need to have up until five. Um, and on your team. And, again, you can do it as an individual or win as a team. So the cross-country state championships in Waco is October 30th. Brian, you want to move on and talk a little bit about alignment? Before we jump to alignment, let's take a stopping point here. We gave you a lot of dates out there. These are all found on the TAPS approved calendar. So if you go to the TAPS website, www.taps.biz, click in the red uh, icon bar at the top, click on the word calendar. That is the official calendar. So as you go back through, you're looking at dates, you're looking at deadlines, and you're concerned, I think that's where you go. Robert, I'm going to put you on the spot here, but Steve mentioned that word off season for basketball and soccer. So uh, talk to us between now when football and volleyball practice have started and before the first day of school are we allowed off-season practice before school actually starts so this is a great question i answered this call again this morning we've had one probably each day uh, since we started activities last week from a calendar perspective re, re, uh, keep this in mind as you plan throughout the year for all your activities the, the current school year begins from a TAPS perspective on that first Monday when we start activities. In this, in this case, that was last Monday uh, a week ago with volleyball, uh, football, cross country, and fall soccer. That is the beginning of the school year from a TAPS perspective. But for all those programs that would be in off season during the fall, for instance, uh, if we're talking basketball or soccer, you cannot start off-season programs until you start your first day of school. Uh, the reasoning behind that is um, you're in kind of a no man's land between summer activities and school activities, and you don't have those students captive at your school because they're not required to attend school. So you can't make those type of practices mandatory. You can't make you can't have any mandatory practices like you would in an off season once school begins. Uh, you could have open gym opportunities. But be very careful that looking at Section 1, you follow those specific requirements for an open gym. But you cannot have off-season type activities until you actually begin classes. That will be different for different schools because you'll start on different dates. But that is a time to kind of take a break from the summer before you get moving full bore into those off-season activities. Again, if you got questions on that, reach out to the TAPS office. We'd love to help you walk through your specific situation so we can help you. We're going to talk a little bit about alignment. This is an alignment year for both TAPS and the UIL. So classification and division your school rests in right now, we're based on your enrollment from the 1920 and 21-22 seasons, and it's an average. So you may have moved up or you may have moved down in overall enrollment as we move forward. So that's how you got to where you are. Uh, we're going to have a resource course coming. Uh, but basically, we're going to use your enrollment from last year and then your enrollment for this year to determine an and average so if your school is growing then uh, you might actually get lucky and stay down a classification if your uh, school is dropping in enrollment it may keep you up for one more alignment period there's a resource course coming we'll get that out in the next few weeks uh, to help you walk through exactly what the alignment process is that way we can answer questions uh, but it'll also give you a resource to help your families to help your administration and your coaches understand where you've gotten uh, the basic structure is governed in the bylaws if you go to www.taps.biz and you click on the word bylaws, it'll take you to a long document. Uh, use that little uh, table of contents on the side and get down and you'll see where those are. We do align into both classifications and divisions. And I'll kind of trump back on what Steve said earlier. The information you present on the anticipation form, we'll jump on that. I like to 
had anticipated or participated. For uh, individual sports and for most of the fine arts, we can usually accommodate and make a few changes down the road. But for team sports, uh, it's really important that you go ask your families, you survey your kids, especially if your numbers are close on football or your numbers are close on baseball or softball or soccer. Because what we don't want to do is align folks in, and then if you have an eight-team district and you have six schools that pull out by the time we get to next fall, obviously you're leaving a two-team district. So there's some review to be had there, but do yourself a favor, do TAPS a favor, and uh, walk on through. John, is there uh, any questions there in the chat box that we need to concern ourselves with? Or keep moving forward? No, sir, not yet. All right. Mr. Hulan, our athletic director, walk us into the TAPS database rank one, everybody's friend. All right. As we move from what's been going on in TAPS, we do want to point out some really important tasks that will involve you as an athletic director. And as Brian said, first and foremost is our TAPS database rank one. It's going to involve three main things, your athletes, your personnel, and your schedules. I'm going to talk a little bit about your athletes. Number one, in rank one, make sure you enter all your kids that are in high school, not just your athletes. You never know if one, some kid decides to come out for a sport that you weren't counting on before. So make sure all your kids are in rank one. And then as you fill out those eligibility rosters for football or volleyball or whatever sport, make sure you enter all your athletes, not just your varsity athletes. We want anybody who is involved in your high school program needs to be entered there. Look also through uh, through your uh, rank one account there and, and, and take any students who have left your school and make them inactive. Okay, click on them and make them inactive so they're no longer part of your rank one roster. As you look at your eligibility rosters, it's real important you make sure all of your kids are eligible. And to be eligible, it involves four main things, and you can see this in, in rank one. Number one, at, they need to have filled out their student profile. They need to have filled out the signature page. They need to have turned in a medical history, and they need to turn in a physical. Those are the four main things that each student must do to be eligible. If they're missing one of those things, they're not eligible. Now, in certain situations, if you have a kid that's a transfer, obviously those transfer forms have to be taken care of. Know this, that if they are a transfer, they need an STF or a student transfer form, whether they have participated in a sport at the previous school or not. If they are a new high school student, they need a student transfer form. The PAPF, or Previous Athletic Participation Form, is needed if they have participated in a sport at the previous high school. Participation means not just playing in games. If they attended practices or even if they went to tryout and got cut, that means they were a previous participant and they will need a PAPF. If you're not sure what your kiddo is lacking, there's a question mark mark there under eligible info you can click on that and it can show you what form your student is lacking i'm going to jump in just before we move on here steve and just uh, clarify a couple of things number one if you have students that are participating in swim meets fall golf tournaments team tennis or fall tennis tournaments and they're representing you you're entering them as abc high school they also need to have their eligibility roster filled out as well so we all think about the fall sports we think about volleyball fall soccer football and cross country but if your school has students that are representing your school you're paying the money you're providing the transportation and the coaching whatever it is for uh, tennis golf or swim in the fall uh, then we need to go ahead and make sure those rosters so you'll just do your your tennis, golf, and swim roster that way. Robert, does that sound correct in what we've applied in the past? No, nope, that is correct. They are participating. We have schools that play in fall golf tournaments and those kind of things, and they do need to be eligible under TAPS rules when they're competing in any interscholastic competition. All right. That's going to bring you to the, the big one today, transfer students. Mr. Hulan, lead us on. So transfer students obviously are, are a big issue right now. Uh, over the year, we will process about 2,000 transfers here at TAPS. Right now, 600 have crossed our desk, and we are working on those as fast as we can. It is not a quick process. We have multiple people that look at those kind of things. Uh, one thing to look at, as your students are filling out an STF or a PAPF, make sure they are complete. Make sure they have answered all the questions. A lot of times, you may be getting an email from Delaney Bunselmeyer that says, hey, we need an answer to question number 13 or 14, so Kai, if you can't and look over your parents' shoulders as they're filling those things out. Watch your emails. 
when you're trying to find out, hey, I've, I've got this kid who's transferred, is he or she eligible? We will send you uh, a notification as to when they've gone through the transfer process and they're complete and they're eligible. Also look for emails about transfers to your district opponent school. We will send those to the first sport that's listed on the transfer form. If you have a kid that's a, a football, basketball, baseball player, we will send that to the football district schools so that they can look those things over. Uh, you as a district are allowed to look at those things and make sure you think everything is okay. If you have some information about a transfer that doesn't quite add up, even after we have approved that transfer, you can raise a concern and we can look at that. We can look at that again. The important thing is that until Until the TAPS office has approved your transfer student, they are not eligible. And that means they are not eligible for a scrimmage, JV, varsity. They can practice with you, but they cannot enter an interscholastic contest of any kind against an opponent. So I think the big thing there, gentlemen, that I'm hearing is especially volleyball because games are started, tournaments are started. We need to go back through there. If you've got transferring students that have come into high school this year, if that were at another high school or program previously, that has to be approved by TAPS, and that date can be found in rank one. The other thing that's very important is the STF is an online form. They Parents will fill that out once they create the student profile. The PAPF, just like the UIL, is a physical form that must be signed by the previous school. Even if they came from Maine or Maryland or Wisconsin, if they were at another school last year, we need the PAPF. So if you've got a school that won't sign, if you've got a school that perhaps is is too far off, the parents don't want to go back, there is a process that we go through, but that process is obviously going to take longer than getting the signature and no problems. If there are problems noted, our office will contact you uh, once that information gets uploaded to help you walk through the process. So again, we're here to help. If you've got problems, uh, I think transfer students give us an awful lot of trouble as we go through the year. Uh, But most of the trouble is is resolved once the calm heads are in the room and we are able to talk through processes and changes. All right, the last two uh, circumstances that you need to be aware of, if you have any international students coming to your school or students that aren't living with their biological parents there is additional paperwork and processes that that you've got to walk through one thing about the international students that changed last year if you have an international student they no longer have to sit out a year of eligibility and play jv Uh, if their paperwork all lines up and there are no issues there once they go through that process they can be eligible for varsity that year I think the big key is they've tended the paperwork, but they must be approved. So let's not skip the approval step. And that way, if the office has any questions, uh, if they were an international student that played in the United States last year, they'd fall under two categories. They'd be an international student or student not living parent, and they'd be a transfer student. So you've got two steps to jump through before you get there. All right, before we jump on, that's been a lot of information. We want to pause and see if there are any questions out there of, of the things that we've talked about so far. I've got one question in here so far. Uh, We are asked to please address the cooperative rules for schools that would like to partner to offer a sport or fine arts activity. Students, uh, based on the TAPS bylaws, must attend the school in which they participate. So there are no combined programs. There are no uh, provisions in the TAPS bylaws. Uh, That's been brought up numerous times by our athletic executive committee and the executive board. And in the best interest of TAPS, uh, they have affirmed that uh, students must be a full-time day student attending the school uh, for which they participate. So if you don't have football and your neighbor down the street does, uh, your students cannot participate with that group for football. Uh, That also applies to homeschool groups. Uh, or groups that are outside of TAPS. So if students are attending your school as a full-time day student, they're not eligible to go play with a home school group. Uh, and consequently and conversely, those schools are not eligible opponents for you. So we've looked at that in the past. Uh, so far, the board, uh, the executive board, has not seen that to be uh, from uh, a better way in the best interest of TAPS. Robert, Steve, and Steve, am I missing anything on that answer? Nope, that is correct. Um, <clears throat> TAPS is about interscholastic competition, um, and uh, just like the UIL and other state governing associations, that's confined to being a student at that particular school. All right, I've got the next one. We're going to jump in. We're still on eligibility in rank one, but we're going to shift from the student world to now the coach and the personnel world. So uh, make sure 
uh, just as we did with students. Make sure all your coaches are in rank one and then make sure they've gone through their eligibility requirements just like we talked about with students. So who is a coach? Well, that's defined in section one. So basically paid, unpaid, volunteer, stipend only, part-time, all those kind of things are still a coach under that TAPS definition in section one. So make sure any coach that's interacting with your students in practice, in games, in any situation where they're interacting and, uh, and uh, uh, participating with the students and with the coaches, even though they may be a dad or mom or even though they may have another full-time job, if they are performing functions of a coach, and those are defined in Section 1 as well, they are considered a coach for TAPS purposes. So take that big net that we've created there of the definition of a coach and make sure all those people in all your programs are in Rank 1. Enter all your coaches, not just the head coach, of each sport that's all your coaches and all assistants and please make sure to enter all the roles they serve at your school so if they're a head coach in one sport but an assistant in several others make sure that's in there this is critical not only that they're in there and they they go through all their compliance but it's also critical because as we communicate throughout the year in the various sports and activities we will pull from rank one that list of coaches and we will send that information to that group. So if they're a head coach over here and somewhere else, but they're only listed once, they're not going to get that communication in that other sport if they're not listed in rank one. And then once you get them all in there, uh, uh, make sure you have all your current ones in there. And if you have those who have been in rank one in the past that are no longer a coach at your school, make them inactive, get them out of the system, and that will help as well. If you need assistance with any of that, you can reach out to our office, Kelly and Rhonda and others of our staff. Steve does a great job. Steve is most recently on our staff from the school level. So in some areas of, of, of uh, using rank one at the AD level, he's very adept at that and he can help you walk through that as well. Once they're in there, let's talk about coach compliance. They have to go through a similar process of making sure they've completed forms and done all the things that they need to do. Uh, they, uh, they have to complete the team's uh, certification, those courses that we created and released this summer. So they need to go through that process. They need to complete that team's course when they get to, I think it's module number 14. That's the final certificate that they print out. And you can upload that into their file in rank one. And then they have to execute their acknowledgement of rules on an annual basis, just like we've always done. There are some health and safety requirements of coaches. Uh, and those are all contained in section 138. If you go to 138, it's quite a long section, but if you'll scroll down for a little ways, you'll find something there that talks, talks about coach training and coach compliance. These are the things that your coaches need to have done um, based on that listing there. If they are new to coaching, uh, this is one that gets overlooked sometimes. If they are new to coaching in the interscholastic world, in the high school world, uh, not club, not select, not AAU, if they are, uh, they may be a great coach in that sport, but if they are new to the interscholastic world, they haven't coached at a TAP school or a public school or any other school environment. If they have less than uh, five years of experience, they need to go through some NF NFHS training courses, and those are listed there in that section. They need to have a fundamentals of coaching course, and they need to have a sports-specific course. So just make sure they're all in rank one. Make sure they've completed all their certification for the year, that they've completed all those forms, signed off on their acknowledgement of rules, and completed all of the health and safety things, first aid, sudden cardiac arrest, those things that are listed there in Section 138. We know a lot of you, the school set, uh, setting are probably going through or have been through in-service already. You provide some of these things, first aid training, um, AED training, CPR, those kind of things. You might provide that at your school level as a part of your in-service and things that you require there. It's a great opportunity to get all those coaches in on that as well and get those checked off uh, in that respect. Brian, any comments, anything I missed there? 
I don't think you missed it. I think I'll just add to this. This is basically for your high school coaches. However, many of you who have junior high coaches, those junior high coaches may also work with high school kids at some point. They may be a position coach in volleyball. They might be the junior high head coach, but they may come work with all students to serve, receive. Your kickers coach, your punters, and your place kickers, that guy may work with everybody. So he may be the head coach or the assistant coach at the junior high level, but if he's working with high school kids, make sure they're in rank one and make sure they're green. And like Robert said on the health and safety, with the temperature we have out there right now and some other things that are going on across the nation, we don't just require that you get first aid and sudden cardiac arrest and concussion just to check a box. We really want you to go back through the training. We want you to recognize the signs and symptoms. So many of you don't have a trainer, but if you do have a trainer, please, please, please rely on them. Uh, and, and again, I couldn't say it enough. Uh, Coach Perdome, when we're sitting here talking about coaches, uh, I've always kind of looked at it. if you're going to put them in khakis in a in a polo and they're on the sideline, they're yours. What was your thought after your years? Well, knowing us, when you come to our events and you say, I need eight chairs for my assistant coaches, I'm going to look on rank one and go, I only see four names here. Who are these other people? Um, again, you're going to be liable for whoever's on your bench or your sideline. And if something occurs and they have not been cleared and, and they're not eligible, again, that's going to be on the athletic director. So make sure you have everybody there. Uh, compliant and make sure you know who's showing up with the teams and who's involved in our events. John, you got any more questions or are we sitting here pretty close? No, sir, unless anybody needs to unmute and ask one. We don't have any questions in the chat right now. Looks like all red marks to me. All right, we'll keep moving forward. We're going to talk a little bit about schedules and scores. So we do require that all of your varsity teams are in rank one uh, and that you put your schedules and your scores in there. Uh, so please do us a favor and make sure that you do get your schedules and scores. And the biggest word of all is public. You have to turn those schedules and those scores public. So I will say with volleyball games starting now, if you go back with your volleyball coaches, please don't let them get behind because we do require that they report every tournament score. So uh, if they're playing today or playing yesterday, make sure that score is in there and turn public. Uh, and then if they're in a tournament like Spike Down, they might play up to 10 or 12. Uh, contest in that tournament all of those need to be recorded tournament scores non-district district etc all need to be there and the task bylaws do require that they're in there within 48 hours our office does a cursory check on mondays but i guarantee your district opponents and other opponents are checking it even more often than we are and they're the ones that are going to call and say that you're out of compliance so help us be compliant uh, if you do have to cancel a game uh, unfortunately whether it be your uh, your case or your opponent's case please go back in and make Make sure you show canceled. Uh, that way you still are within your game uh, restrictions and game limitations. Uh, and again, with winter sports, whether it be basketball or soccer, the quicker that you can get those schedules in and up to date, it helps everybody. Tap, uh, TAPS covers the entire state of Texas. It's 800 miles from Beaumont to El Paso and about that far from Brownsville to uh, Amarillo. We've got schools all the way throughout. So who you may be playing in the playoffs or the Final Four, they may not get to see you. They rely on your scores and max preps is not the only reporting place so you are required to put your schedules in your scores uh, into rank one and we would hope that you uh, can get them into our system as quick as uh, it seems like some schools can get them into the max prep system robert talk to us a little bit more about forms and reports with rank one and otherwise okay um if as you once you're in uh, as a coach uh once you're in rank one in the system uh, you'll have a login, you log in, and, and as soon as you log in, a page will pop up, and that's your page, and there's some important things on there that are resources for you in Rank 1 that will help you uh, as you're looking for things to send in and report to TAPS and uh, things that you need to do. Um, as you uh, first open up that page in Rank 1, if you look over on the left tab, uh, down toward the bottom, uh, there's a little indication there whether you're compliant or non-compliant with your current um, team's courses and acknowledgement of rules. So that's always a good place to know that you've done all that, you're good. That left column there has a listing of things, and one of the most important things in that list is something called a coach's toolkit. It's in the left column, um, and if you click on that tab, it will take you to a page. If you scroll down just a little, there's a long list of forms that you might need for various things throughout the year, and that's where you can find those forms. Let me give you one that's uh, that's uh, that happens uh, 
Uh, we hope not too much, uh, but it happens too often throughout the year, and that's, that's what's called an ejection form. Uh, that form is there. Uh, we call an ejection a removal from contest. Uh, that's a situation where something happens uh, during an event, an official has determined that that particular coach or player or fan, unfortunately we've seen more fans in the past, can no longer participate in that contest for the remainder of that contest. So they have been removed from the contest, uh, or as many people will say, they've been ejected from the game. It does happen, unfortunately, and when it does, there's a requirement uh, that a, an ejection form be completed. Uh, you need to do that at your level as the coach and or administrator, make sure that happens. We require that that's done within 48 hours of that incident. Um, and um, we're requiring it, if there's two TAP schools playing, we require both TAP schools to report. Um, so for instance, if, if my, my school's playing Steve and he has an ejection and I don't, I'm still obligated as a TAP school to fill out that report because that gives us more information about the incident that occurred. We do receive ejection reports from the officials' chapters as well, but we accumulate all that information and then communicate back to you that particular uh, fine and suspension that would apply based on that situation. So that's just an example of one of the important forms that's in that coach's toolkit. If you want to play an out-of-state opponent or play uh, out-of-state games or in a tournament, uh, there's a, a form on there as well that's out-of-state opponents. Any of those forms you complete in that coach's toolkit, they come, it's an online submission, they come directly to our office so we can see those immediately. If a situation arose during the year, where you needed to appeal something that's in the bylaws, um, say you had a transfer that didn't, a senior transfer that didn't make it to the school before that deadline, but there were extenuating circumstances. Maybe it's a military family that got transferred last minute or something like that. There is an appeal process for those type of situations if it's a bylaw provision, and that form to submit that appeal and all those documents can be found there. So it's a great resource within rank one. Um, Rank one is also where you will report injuries and things that happen to your students throughout the year. If it's a concussion, if it's a major injury, if it's anything like that, there's an injury reporting form in there. You can go in there and complete that. That data is not seen by us at the TAPS level. Uh, that is private and confidential medical information, but it's a very generic description of the date, the time, the place, and just a general description of what occurred. That information is very helpful uh, on our end to be able to, to have um, a, a database of injury information that is disaggregated and, it, and it's, it's very much helpful just from a statistical standpoint. Brian? Well, I'm going to jump in real quick on the health and safety form. We, we've had that for several years. We really need attention to detail, uh, whether it's a head coach or uh, whether it be the athletic director or the trainer completing the form. Uh, this just goes back to uh, solidify our league, to solidify your school, that we do take this very seriously, health and safety. Uh, over the years, has become more and more. I played at a time when you shook off a concussion and said, hey, I got a little dinged up and I'm coming right back. Uh, but now in today's world, we really need to pay attention. So help us to help you by completing that. Again, it's disaggregated from the students, but our health and safety partner, Children's Health Andrews Institute, does look at that material, and it does help us to determine what further training or future trainings we could do. So I appreciate all the help. Robert, we had one more form you were going to talk about. Uh, I think it was what happens if you needed to add a sport or add an activity. If you need to add or drop something throughout the year, so let's assume we've gotten the year started. Uh, you're already assigned to all your districts. You've already uh, sent in your intent to participate. So, so in our office, we have, we have selected in rank one all those activities that your school has signed up for. Um, there, there are forms on there to complete an ad or a drop, but do us a favor, drop us an email, give us a call anytime one of those situations occurs, because we really need, we, we need to know that there's an ad or a drop situation out there, but we really need to make those changes at our level in rank one to make sure that all of our database information is correct, that you're not pulled out of the standings automatically, or you don't basically, for lack of a better description, you don't mess up the system. So if you have an ad or a drop, do, do us a favor, let us know, give us a heads up, 
there will be requirements to communicate to the district and those kind of things that we can help you walk through. But that information is there to at least give us a heads up. That's what you're dealing with and start that process for you. I think one of the ironic things is TAPS is usually the last person to know when somebody drops something. So we'd like to reverse that trend. If you've signed up for girls winter soccer or softball or whatever, uh, and you can't complete that task before we get to the season, please make sure you reach out to us, talk to the guys here in the office, fill out the form. I think that would be helpful. As we move forward, I want to talk a little bit about dues and fees. Your membership dues and event fees are due September 1st. Steve brought that up way back at the very beginning of our talk. So your membership dues and event fees, along with your contracts and participation form, are all due in the TAPS office by September 1st. Many of you already know what you're going to participate in. Make sure you include your fine arts. Uh, but if you can go ahead and get that in to us, uh, it sure does help us make sure the standing page looks good and those things are all up to date and correct. Uh, every year we have a couple of schools that struggle uh, with making the payment by September 1st. If your school falls into that situation, please reach out to us. We'll be glad to work with you as best we can and see what we can do. If you go to www.taps.biz, you click on athletic. Athletics, there's also going to be an athletic fees chart. So for individual activities and for some tournaments and showcases, there's an entry fee like cross country or swim or the fall soccer tournament. Those fees will be due at the time of the event. So you have membership and event fees. Those are due September 1. And then entry fees for uh, other events are due at the time of the event. Steve, let's move on to game management. Talk to us a little bit about your foresight there. Sure. You know, uh, volleyball games have begun and right on the horizon. You've got probably a football scrimmage coming up this weekend and football games. Some really critical things to keep in mind as far as game management. Uh, number one, at every home game, TAPS requires a home game administrator. This is somebody who is in charge of providing a safe and positive environment for all who are involved. Uh, this is a critical, critical thing for, for safety, uh, and, and it can also help, as we talked about, uh, a removal from contests. A lot of times a really good game manager can make sure those kind of things don't happen. Last Friday, we sent an email out that had a video and a checklist uh, concerning Concerning game management and home game administrators, uh, it'd be good to show those to all all uh, your people who are going to be involved in being a game administrator. Officials are also really important. I'm going to pass it on to Steve Perdome. Yes, sir. They are very important. We don't have a game without them. And uh, again, TAPS approves officials. We approve all TASO officials. We also approve all THSB. Uh, sorry, all TASO chapters not officials. I'll talk about that in a second. And we also approve all THSBOA chapters. And then we have selected chapters that have gone through the process of approval by TAPS. These are listed on the TAPS webpage. If you click athletics and then go down and click officials, you can follow through and find out the different uh, chapters that are available that were approved by TAPS. Also, if you go to the TASO or the THSBOA website, you'll see where your local chapters are. So make sure that you're uh, talking to these folks, communicating, getting those schedules in early. Uh, pay scales are also listed with the under the officials page. We expect you to follow this pay scale. This has been agreed upon by TAPS and the UIL uh, with the organizations at the state level. If you have a situation with the chapter, Again, we want you to work with your chapter, whether it's scheduling or getting two or three officials or whatever you want to. If it's a big, if it's a big incident, make sure that you're including the TAPS office in that. If we have an ejection, we've gone over that. But if you have an incident one way or the other with an official, you can come to the TAPS office and we'll work with their leadership as well. If you have an ejection, you're not going to appeal it to your chapter, okay? That needs to come back to TAPS, and again, uh, we can go over what protest of, of removal from contest or if you want to protest a game. Again, we have those in Section 134 that will tell you, and again, TAPS will not uh, look at protest of an official's call, but we can help the officials as they move forward to get better, and we can help you as you move forward to get better. So make sure that you're communicating with our office, communicate with your chapters, and again, remember that we're here to, to look out for you, but we're also there to support the officials. Uh, Steve, do you want to visit a little bit about the TAPS passes? 
Sure, we get a lot of questions about that. We are planning on mailing these out next week. These are the VIP passes, or sometimes coach, uh, schools use these for the coaches who go out scouting. A couple things. We send out 10 per school. You cannot make copies of these, and we've figured this out. Uh, we put a QR code on there, so if you try and use more than 10 by making copies, you're going to get in trouble. Uh, don't lose these. To replace these, the cost is $300 each. Okay. These are good for the pass holder and the family. This could be your, your spouse and minor kids. But all TAP schools must honor TAP's passes. This is not an option. All TAP schools must accept these for all events, whether they're tournaments, whether they're non-district, district, postseason, any of those kind of things. If it is a TAPS event and it is a home TAP school, they must be accepted. Obviously, if you're playing a, a UIL school or a school that's from uh, some, some organization other than TAPS, they do not have to accept a TAPS pass. But look for those coming soon. We're planning to mail those out next week. Want to pause now? Or do we have any questions that need to be asked? No? We're good. Then let's pat, move on to Steve Perdome. Yes, and, and the TAPS website. Uh, TAPS website is, is an incredibly important resource for you. Uh, back in the day, Mr. Bertelson used to always tell us, you better look at that website every day to see if something changed or was updated. And again, his voice still rings in our heads if you were there when he was the, uh, the executive director of TAPS. And Brian says the exact same thing. Check the TAPS website. Great information if you go to the TAPS website. And if you click on athletics, you got some great red buttons right there with incredibly good information that you're going to need. On the uh, right side, though, of the athletic page, you'll see athletic emails and posts. If you click that, we call that the athletic director's corner, but it will show you the different emails that have been sent out. So it may be easier for you to review that as opposed to go back into your own emails. Also, if you look up and you see athletic director emails on our website that you have not received, then you probably want to contact the office and make sure that we have the right email address and contact information for you. But again, the TAPS website is a great resource uh, to go to. Also, if you're asking for rules, if you look at the top, it says bylaws. You click on that, you get the constitution and you get the bylaws and you go back and again, you should be looking through that all the time. I think we had one new athletic director once said, she said she would read the bylaws and, and uh, get that all done. And, and she says, I probably can get this done tonight and read them and, and we'll be okay. And then she figured it out. It was a little bit more to it than that. So make sure that you're constantly reading the, uh, the bylaws and the Constitution. If you have a question, try to go find it for yourself. But if you come to us, we're also going to redirect you. We'll probably cut and paste from the bylaws. Again, those are extremely important, and they can help you out immensely. Well, moving on to social media. John. Thank you, Steve. Once again, folks, I'm the only person that you can't see on camera right now. I'm John Skies. I'm the director of media for TAPS. Uh, TAPS is pretty involved in the social media space. We've got three uh, main platforms that's directly for social media. We've got our main Twitter account that's at TAPSBiz. We also have uh, uh, auxiliary accounts for all of our major activities. So there's an account for football. There's an account for volleyball, for track, for cross country, for cheer, for one act play, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> We use those uh, smaller accounts to share updates with you and with parents during an event so that we're not so so people can can subscribe to what they they need to know. So for instance, if we've got a weather delay at cross country for whatever reason, we're going to post all that information on our cross country Twitter account so uh, so families so everybody there can see what's going on and stay on top of things. Um, we are also on Facebook and Instagram um, at tapsbiz for both of those. You can find all of our content there. We're sharing all kinds of things uh, on those platforms. We also have um, a podcast. We've got two shows on our podcast. There's a weekly show called This Week in Taps, and that is released every Monday. Uh, and that's kind of an overview of the week to come. So we talk about important deadlines coming up, whether it's transfer deadlines or registration deadlines. We talk about uh, events that are coming up, details for those events. So for instance, we've got um, Spike Down this week, and we've got stuff in there for our parents and for you. Uh, we also cover whatever happened the week before. So if we just finished uh, our volleyball state championships, we're going to get highlights from that from uh, from the broadcasts of those championships. We might have interviews with coaches uh, or from fans or players or whoever 
whoever was there. Um, this is our second year on this podcast show, and you can find it uh, anywhere you get your podcast. If you just search for Taps Talk, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can also stream it from our website. If you look under the Resources tab, we've got This Week in Taps right here, and you can stream all of our episodes there. We've got a second podcast called Taps Talk, and this is where we go a little bit more in-depth uh, into certain things. This is kind of backgrounders on some of our events or history of some of our events, or maybe we go into uh, in, in, in depth on something like eSports that's new. Uh, and, we, and we will interview lots of people in our, in our community, people from our, our, par- our partners, we're bringing them in. We did several large episodes last year. We did one on orchestra where we kind of did it like a classical music hour. We've got uh, interviews with all of the directors and then excerpts from uh, their performances uh, at the 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 previous year's con- uh, uh, contest. We've got we did one on one act play where we talked to the judges and we talked to directors. We've done one on team tennis. Uh, we've done them on match play golf when that was new on spike down from last year. We've got all kinds of episodes there. It's in the same feed. We just kind of release those as we go. And again, that's on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts. We also provide uh, photos of all of our championship events and we put those on our Smug Mug page. If you look at taps.biz slash photos and I apologize for not having this queued up you're going to see all of the events that we had the previous year um, these are free to download for you and for your parents. Your parents can order prints if you if they want, but they don't have to. Uh, and this is also good for you as new schools uh, to see what an event would look like. If you've never been to a one-act play or if you've never been to a music competition or track or anything, you can see how those look uh, here or wrestling. Uh, we'll have them broken down by division or by game. Um, We'll have multiple photographers at certain events, and again, all these are here. Uh, These get used in yearbooks. These get used in school promotions. We're happy to see them on team social media all the time. Uh, We we put a lot of effort into the quality of these images, so they're not always available the day of the competition. Um, And especially, uh, there's some delays when we have competitions back-to-back. So, for instance, uh, football usually is right before cheer, so we have to get all the football images done, but we can't start on those until, say, for instance, cheer is over. So, they're not usually up the day after, but they are uh, almost always up the week after. Uh, And those are there. That's there for you, and that's for your parents, uh, your yearbook teachers, anything that you need. Uh, that is available for you. We make announcements on our social media accounts when those pictures are available. Uh, and if you can't find something or, or need something specific, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. You can send us an email uh, at info at taps.biz. Uh, we also run live broadcasts on our championship events. That's Taps TV with our partner Huddle. Uh, um, some of our broadcasts are free. Some of them are not. It depends on sponsorship deals, all kinds of stuff, and we can get into that more specifically later. Uh, but we've got all of that available for you. Um, we'll have commentators. We've got uh, multiple cameras. It, it, again, it depends on 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 what we can show at an event. So, for instance, we can't really broadcast golf, uh, but we can broadcast the start and finish line of cross country. I can't put cameras everywhere on the on the course, but I can show you the start and finish. Um, we've got drone coverage cameras sometimes. Uh, for football, we'll pair with the, the, the video production staff of whatever facility that we're using, and we'll have multi-camera shoots on all of those things. We've got, can't, we'll have broadcasts for basketball, for volleyball, for all of our major events. Uh, that's available for you, uh, and that's available for your parents. Um, we put links to those on our social media accounts as well, but you can also get to them uh, from the TAPS website. And I think that's it for social media. Brian, I'm going to hand it back to you. I think I'd just like to trumpet TAPS TV. We've been with uh, this our sixth year now going with what is now Huddle TV. So if you're looking at a live stream partner, a live stream platform, please jump on. Uh, give us a call here. We'll be glad to talk to you about Huddle TV and our experience therein. We also use Mixler for our online streaming for TAPS radio. So for our team events, you'll find them on TAPS TV and the TAPS radio broadcast is free. Steve Ahulan, follow us up with the next section.
Sure. Uh, you've heard about our team's courses, obviously, and hopefully your coaches are, are taking those and getting compliant in that area. We are also producing some team's resource courses. These are courses that are, are they're not required, but highly recommended. We are producing some on sportsmanship, on, on realignment for this fall, one for your admissions and academic counseling office. In fact, that is completed, and we are emailing that out today so that you can share that with your admissions and counseling department so that they can help you uh, run your athletic program more efficiently and keep you in compliance with TAPS. Uh, anyway, keep an eye out for emails because we will be sending those out periodically, just something that can help you understand your role in TAPS better and how to, how to be compliant with, with all the rules that we have in TAPS. Going to pause now and have a general question and answer session for people who may have questions over what we've done as we kind of look to wrap things up here. I've got one question in the chat right now. Uh, does TAPS offer a standard pregame behavior or attitude announcement to the crowd, or is that left up to each school? It's left up to each school, but what we can do is share our pregame announcements with you. Uh, at one point, that was on your TAPS toolkit in rank one, so we'll go back and look. If it's not there, we'll make sure we get that added and emailed out for all TAPS events. That's in the chat right now. Final thoughts. Mr. Hohulan. Well, I guess as somebody who's just one year removed from being an athletic director of school, I know with all of you out there, there are a lot of things going on. And so we hope that this uh, presentation has helped you in that. Remember that we are here to help, so don't be afraid to reach out to us, and we can you know, help you uh, understand the TAPS bylaws and rules and regulations better. Steve? Yeah, we're off to another school year, and, and again, we, we, we hope you're, you've gotten off to a good start. Again, we're here to support you. Also, we know it's a demanding job. Many people won't understand that, but there's folks here in the office that will understand that, and we're here to help. But again, you got to ask the question. Don't assume. We don't want a forgiveness. We'd rather have permission. We'd rather have explanation and education. So, again, go that route, and you're going to be okay. Robert? Uh, we understand uh, uh, that uh, what we do in trying to supply governance for our organization and trying to run all our events, it, it's a massive undertaking. It becomes really massive for us at the TAPS office level when we try to put together a training course or we try to do something like this to give you just a little bit of a thumbnail sketch of all the information. We know it's a lot of information. We, we do understand that. So anytime you have questions, reach out. Uh, this was intended to be kind of a 10,000-foot overview of some areas that, as we begin the year, very, very important for you to stay on top of and make sure everything's in place so you can have a good year. But always reach out to our office if you have questions or need assistance throughout the year. I think my final thoughts would be this. Congratulations for making it this far. Uh, golf clap and a pat on the back for everything you've done well. Uh, for the questions, give us a call and help us walk through. And if you stumble, please don't uh, don't be afraid to call. We're your advocates as we walk through the system. Uh, we have a great staff. Uh, we've been built over the years. Each of my staff has uh, connections to TAPS and TAPS member schools. So we've walked in your shoes. It might have been a while ago, like me, 18 years ago, but we've been we've been doing this to to make it the best. TAPS is 41,000 kids, 240 schools, and almost 6,000 coaches and fine art directors. You're part of the biggest organization in the world. We wouldn't be that without you. So you're the linchpin that keeps it all going. Thank you to you for being uh, in your role as athletic director and for your school for being a member of TAPS. We're here to help. Reach out to us. Info, I-N-F-O, with TAPS.biz. Go back to the website, www.taps.biz. There's a ton of information. And if you need that personal touch, 254 254- 947-9268. We're all here to help uh, make sure your fine arts folks feel welcome as well. We're off to a great start of the 23-24 school year. Uh, if you've got questions again that we didn't get to here, please reach out at info at taps.biz. Give us all the information you can and we'll help walk you through. Look forward to seeing you soon at a TAPS event.